be there in answer to her prayer. And I'll tell you the background of the song that you just heard this morning. So listen carefully. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father. But a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. I can't think of anything more sad than for a son to break his mother's heart. And a lot of us have. How The foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Now, I'm going to talk to you about a president where this song came from. It was President William McKinley. If they made you memorize the presidents in school, you'll remember that name. He was the 25th president of the United States, born January 29, 1843, died September 14, 1901, which made him only 54 years old. It, during his presidency, he was remembered, I had to look this up, for two or three things. One of them was helping, helping get victory in the Spanish-American War. He also was influential in helping America stay on the gold standard, which at that time, a lot of uh, political leaders wanted to switch to silver. Um, so during his presidency, his mother, we're talking, we're talking 1890s, y'all. So the uh, telephone might have just been starting to come out. No, no phones, no TV, no, nothing like that. And the only way to get news from one place to another was by telegram and Morse codes. That's where they'd type it and it'd go through the electrical wires and go to where it was going. It came, it just so happened that President McKinley's mother was very, very, very sick and weak. And it seemed like her end was near. And they sent a telegram to message to President McKinley on her condition. He was way out halfway across the country somewhere. And when he heard that, he sent this telegram back. And it simple was, simply was, they charged you by the words, you know, was in it. And he said, tell mother, I'll be there. And he knew his mother was dying. And he sent that message, tell her I'm coming. I'll be there. And a news reporter picked that thing up. And it got in newspapers all over the United States. Flash, news flash. Back then, president, the presidency had a lot more respect and dignity than it this clown show that that we're seeing nowadays back then people when the president said something boy it meant something and he said tell mother i'll be there and sure enough newspapers all across the country tell mother i'll be there mckinley sends message to mother tell mother to hang on i'll be there and a songwriter uh, a, a very well-known songwriter at that time uh named charles fillmore got so inspired by that that he sat down and wrote that song we just heard. And that song said this, When I was just a young child, how well I recollect, how I would grieve my mother with my foolishness and my uh, folly and neglect. And now she's gone to heaven and I miss her tender care. Oh, Savior, tell my mother I'll be there. President McKinley went to, and got to hold his mother's hand as she crossed the river and went home to heaven. And his words were immortalized. Tell mother, I'll be there. I want to use that as a thought this morning. If you could talk to Jesus. I said it right there when they were singing. I don't know if it works like that or not. But I just looked up and said, Lord, tell my mother I'll be there. And that's the greatest honor. The Bible talks about honoring your mother. That's the greatest honor you could ever put on your mother is help her to know that you'll see her again in heaven one day. There ain't nothing no greater than that. Nothing any greater. By the way, it wasn't long after that that President McKinley, September the 14th, 1901, was assassinated in Buffalo, New York. There's only been four presidents so assassinated. There's him and Garfield and, of course, you know about Abraham Lincoln and then finally John F. Kennedy. And he was one of those four. He was assassinated. But he said, Mother, I'll be there. Let me talk about that for a minute this morning. I, I want to say, uh, I, you, you, can't, you cannot tell your mother 
anything any greater today than to call her up. If she's here, tell her. Call her on the phone. Uh, tell her, say, Mama, I just want you to know one thing. I, I may not have accomplished all the accomplishments that I want to in this life, but I promise you, Mother, I'll see you on the other side. Mother, I'll be there. Can, can anybody think of anything about that? Why? Why? And that would be, um, you, know, you know, my mom, uh, my mom was happier for me. She's the first person I ever told I got saved. My mother, you've heard me tell a hundred times, but uh, it's Mother's Day. And I, the night I got saved, I went home and my mom was in the house with a dish rag. It must have been 10, 30, 11 o'clock. There's a wiping like that. And I walked in the house and my mom had prayed for me my whole life. My mom was the backbone spiritually of our family. Uh, my daddy was right from up in Kentucky, West Virginia, and they, he didn't even know if there was a God, and uh, daddy didn't have any education, and, but mom read the Bible and kept the Bible and preached us all the time. And I know mom was, was proud of me. Like when we'd do stuff, you know, I could tell she's proud, but I, I, the happiest I ever made my mom in her lifetime was that night I come in, I said, Mom, I've been to church. And she said, well, good, son, I'm glad. And something inside said, tell her, tell her. I said, Mom, I got my hair was down to here. I had an old pair of blue jeans with American flag sewed on them down here. I'd been, I had my, all my Grand Funk Railroad tapes and Santana in the car and everything else. And I, and, and I said, Mom, I got saved. And more when I said that, she dropped that dish rag and hugged my neck. And she said, listen, listen. That. And, and she come to hear me preach. She, she didn't really brag on me when I preached. She come to our church and she sort of would critique me. She never would say, you did good. You did. Or once in a while, once in a while she'd say, I'm, I'm glad you said this. But usually she'd say, now son, you're, you're too hard on people. You can't be too hard on people. And she's afraid I'd, I'd preach hard and run people off. And then other times she'd get another spirit and she'd say, let me up there one Sunday. I said, no. no. <laughs> She's going to bless everybody out for being not nice to me. <laughs> if, she, if, we, if somebody was mean to me or mad at me at church, we didn't tell her, boy. <whistles> she, didn't, she didn't like it. She'd have hard feelings to the day she died. Uh, if you ever said a bad word about me. And, uh, and I remember in, in basketball, just, just a few months before I got saved, uh, I graduated from high school. And our basketball team went to the state playoff. That was the first time in that little school there in Nebo, a little 1A school, a very big school. But we played 2A schools and beat them. And our record in basketball when I was a senior was 27-1. And mom didn't really care about it. She'd come to games. Sometimes she didn't even come to ball games. She didn't like it. All that screaming and hollering, that atmosphere. And she wasn't really impressed. I was, uh, we won our district championship. We went to state playoffs in Raleigh, and the team that beat us actually won the state championship that year. And our little team averaged averaged 85 points a game. High school basketball, that's good, with no three-point line. Uh, it would have been a lot more now. For three-point line come out a few years later. Actually, they wasn't even gyms back in them. No, we had a gym. Uh, but uh, uh, it wasn't that bad. But uh, we played. And I... I averaged 21 points a game and was voted the most valuable player of that, that year. And mom just went, oh, well, I got a trophy. It didn't really impress her. But I'm telling you, that night I come in and told her I got saved, that, that tells a lot about her. That's what she thought was important. It wasn't a trophy. I know she's proud of me playing basketball, but it wasn't like when I told her I got saved. It just was different. It was a different kind of mom. Listen, kids, you can't do anything. You can't say anything to honor your mother any more than mother, I'll be there. I'll be there. Why would I say that this morning? Why would I say, tell mother I'll be there? When, when you tell your mother, I'll see you in heaven, it means two or three things. I'll say these and we'll go. First, it means I'm not going to hell. That means I'm not going to hell. Any mother loves her children. No mother wants her children to die without God. No mother wants her child to leave this world not knowing Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how heartbreaking, how awful that would be as a mother to think, I don't know if my boy was saved or not. I don't know if my boy. Listen, if you're a young man here this morning or a middle-aged man 
and you hadn't made things right with God yet, listen, you ought to, you ought to get down for your blessed mother's sake and say, Lord, I'm going to go to heaven. I don't want to break my mother's heart. I don't want my mom to go through life thinking I might have died and went to hell. Uh, you, you say, well, Danny, uh, hell is the hardest thing in the Bible to believe. Yeah, that's right. It is. It's hard. And you know why we believe it? Because the rest of the Bible is true. And I don't know how it's all going to work out, but it does say the Bible, Jesus said there was everlasting punishment, everlasting misery, everlasting torment, everlasting no, I had enough to go to hell. Outside of this, what? I've been to the doctor. I'm healthy. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah, okay. That's not as good as saying I'll see you there. If I went in and said, Mom, look, I just got my college degree, and now I'm a, I'm a this, or I'm a that, or I'm a, I uh, uh, have an MA degree, or you know, they call a uh, uh, MA degree, much applesauce. Uh, 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 a, a PhD, piled higher and deeper. Uh, you know, it's just much, much. Mom, look here, what I got. Look, I graduated from college. Well, I'm proud of you, son. That ain't as good as saying, Mom, you don't have to worry. I'm not going to hell. You don't have to worry. I'll see you there. Anybody tell me anything better than that? Can anybody stand up and say, Brother Danny, I'm something better to tell my mom. I won the lottery. Well, somebody going the government get half, and your relatives get the other half, and and, and you and you'll have to leave it in behind anyway. Nothing can be greater than telling your mother, mother, I'll see you there. Amen. Please tell my mother I'll be there. If you fail, listen to me. If you have failed in every other area of your life, divorce, disease, you might have been arrested, you might have went to prison. If you've messed up everything else. If you can tell your mother that one thing, mama made a mess, mama, and I did, I made messes, I broke my mom's heart, but I'll tell you one thing, my mother knew she's up there in heaven this morning, and my mom knows that her son Danny is coming to be with her one day. Tell mother I'll be there in answer to her prayer. This message, blessed Savior, to her back. Lord, I don't know if, if it works like this or not, but tell her I'm down here preaching. She might be watching me right now. Saying, son, don't be so mean now. Uh, she might be. I don't know. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, brother. Yeah, i tell my mother I'll be there. Number two, let me say quickly this morning, when, when you tell your mother you'll be there, that means you'll get to see her again. We will get to see her again. Glory to God. How many in here this morning, besides me, Already have a mother who's gone on to heaven. Would you raise your hand, please? Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. I mean, there's several hundred people here this morning. And I, I never, I, what about that? Listen, you'll see your mom again. That's shouting ground, people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You'll see her again. I didn't know how to appreciate her while I had her. Sometimes after they're done gone, you, you don't realize what you had till they're gone. And I didn't do all that shit. A lot of times, so mom lived right down below me. And there'd be sometimes all week would go by. And I'd pick her up for church on Sunday morning. And I'd say, uh, Mom, are you all right? And she'd say, yeah, I ain't seen a soul all week. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that's my fault. So I, I got to start stopping more. I got to start going by there more. Can't do that now. I can't do that now. But some of you can. Some of you can. You can call her. You can text her or whatever. You can get a hold of her. Uh, listen, my mom had me. And she had me. Brought me into this world. Nobody else could do that. She, she didn't pay a doctor to kill me. She had me. She had, she had me and birthed me into this world. She, she cooked. She cleaned. She taught. She provided for me. She done without. So if, if we needed anything, tell her I'll be there. I want to see her again, glory to God. You know, George Washington, I'll tell you another president story. George Washington was about ready before he ever thought about being president, uh, was about ready to go to sea and be a shipman. That's what he wanted to do with his life, live at sea and be on a ship. And everything was set. He had already been accepted. He had the job, and he had already had his luggage actually loaded on the ship and was getting ready to take off. And he said, uh, he said wait just a little bit. He said, I'm going to go tell my mother goodbye. He went and told her. She said, George, you're not really going to do this. He said, yes, I am, Mom. He said, I'm, it's adventurous. I'm going to make money. I'm going to have a good time. Mom, I'm going to be a shipman. And tears started coming down her eye, down her face. She said, George, I wish you wouldn't do this. He turned around and walked out of the room. George Washington 
Turned around, walked out of that room, and went and told that guy, he said, get my luggage off that ship. He said, what's the matter, sir? He said, I ain't going. They said, why? He said, I'm not breaking my mother's heart. I'm not going to do it. He said, oh, that's silly. Well, well, you've read the rest of the story, ain't you? He went back and told her, said, Mama, I ain't going. I can't break your heart. Got my luggage off of there. And she said, George, the Bible said, honor thy father and thy mother. And you've done that today, and I believe God's going to bless you. And boy, did he bless him or what? But that dude had horses shot out from under him. He's almost invincible. Yeah, that story of George Washington's amazing, y'all. There'd be a bunch of them going in there to fight, and they'd shoot the men and the horse and everything. They'd shoot him, and his horse go out from under him, and he would escape every time. You know what George said? Mother, you don't have to worry. I'm not going to break your heart. Are you breaking your mother's heart this morning? Are you breaking your mother's heart this morning? Did she sit up at night and worry, oh, God, don't let my kid get killed in a car wreck. God, don't let him overdose. God, don't let him get hurt. God, please, Lord, please, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Get down here like a man ought to. Get your life right with God and call her and say, Mother, I'll be there. You ain't going to have to worry about me no more. I'm not going to party no more. I'm not going to live that lifestyle no more. Mother, I'll be there. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see her again. Now, you, when you see her again, she won't be there. My mom, the last day of her life, you know, y'all had to preach that night down in Mooresville. And Debbie told me, Debbie told me, she said, Danny, it's close. And uh, she's sitting right over there, and she told me, she said, Danny, it's not going to be along. Yeah. And I said, well, what, what am I going to do, Debbie? Uh, she said, you know what, Mama tell you, you go preach like you're supposed to. And I did. I took off to Mooresville and preached. And I left that service. I told the preacher, I said, my mom's getting ready to pass away. And I preached as hard as I possibly could. And I walked out of there. I said, I'm gone. Y'all put my, got my jacket on. And I come flying up Interstate 40. And about the time I got to Hickory, she called and said she's gone. And so I was not there to hold her hand. But I tell you what I'd done. I'd gone to see her. And mom used to like, she used to like them little, uh, Filleted uh, fish sandwich from McDonald's. Remember them little ones? I don't even know if they still. She liked them things for some reason. I remember I'd go buy her one of them, and she wouldn't hardly eat. And, you know, and my, and Debbie, my sister, and my brother-in-law sitting over there, Don, took care of her for months and months and months. I don't know how long it was, and it finally got to where you'd have to put the food up to her mouth, try to get her to eat. You say, brother Danny, what'd you do? Cause. When I was little and couldn't take care of myself, she put the food in my mouth. Amen. And she did too. You too, you little brat. You better not say, I ain't got time to go to mama. I'm going to go live my life with my friends. You better tell mother you'll be there. You better make things right with God and tell mama I'll be there. Tell you another story about a president. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln received telegram. He received a telegram that he had been nominated for, for president. That's the only way they could find out stuff back then. And it was a great, 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 wonderful day. And Abraham Lincoln, they came in and said, Mr. President, Mr. President, they voted. You got the, nomina the nomination. You got the nomination. You're going to get to run for president. And he's, he grabbed his hat and coat. He didn't do a press conference. He didn't call the media in. He, didn't call, he grabbed his hat and coat, and he said, there's a little woman over yonder in that little mountain cabin where I was raised in Kentucky that needs to hear this and took straight off like that and went over there and said, Mama, I guess what? And Abraham Lincoln became president. You know, something about all those great men had a good mother and they, and they honored their mother. Listen, there's something to that old saying, behind every good man is a good woman. There's something to that. That's not just mouth, buddy. There's, it don't, not necessarily 100%, but that's very, very true. In most good men's life, there's a good woman behind him somewhere. And the vice versa might be true also. I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, I tell her I'll be there. He said, tell mother I'll be there in answer to her prayer. And then the third thing, and I'm through this morning, I want to say this. You know the good thing about telling your mother to be there? She can die in peace. Knowing that you're coming on behind her. I wouldn't want my mother to lay on her deathbed and say, I wonder where he's at. I wonder what he's doing. I wonder if I'll ever see him again. I wonder if we'll meet together in heaven. No. 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 You don't want that. You don't want that. You want, you want to let her know. You want to assure her. They said this man, 
125 years ago, when everybody rode horses, they entrusted him to take $22,000 cash to Ohio by horse from somewhere down here. And back then, that'd be like $22,000 in 1890, probably $2 million now, I don't know. Uh, but uh, cash on a horse. And he said, he said that he done real good riding that horse, taking that money to Ohio until he come up there near the Ohio River. And he said when he got to that Ohio River, he saw them great big boats like Proud Mary and all them. And they were going here and going there. And he said right then the devil tempted him. He said he did all right till he seen them boats. And right then the devil tempted him. He said all you'd have to do is just let this horse go on, jump on that boat, take off our road. Nobody never know where you got it. And nobody never know the difference. Back then, it wasn't like now where you trace everybody. All he had to do is just let that horse keep walking, took that $22,000 and got on that boat and vanished out west somewhere and lived it up. Because you was, you had $22,000 in 1890, buddy. You was loaded. You was a very wealthy. It's hard for us to think about it like that now. Uh, it'd be like uh, you had a million dollars cash or more. And he said, he said, at that moment, all I could think about was a thousand miles away in a little humble farmhouse, there was a woman on her knee praying. And he said, that thought, and he was telling his daughters this on his deathbed. He said, that thought kept me from doing it. So you mothers understand when you pray, when you read the Bible, when you listen to the right kind of music in your car and in your home, you remember them little eyes and them little ears are listening. Everything you say, everything you do is teaching them, influencing them, putting thought in their head. I, me and Frankie, I've I, I been letting Frankie hear some of the old hymns. And my goodness, uh, he said, I kind of like that, Daddy. And, and we'll, we're singing one. Uh, I, I forgot what it was. Um, this one. Tell mother I'll be there. And he's been going around the house. How many six-year-olds go around singing, tell mother I'll be there? Hundred-year-old song. It comes from the parents. It comes from the parents. And we also sing, you look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle. That ain't, I don't know if that's satanic or not, but... Uh, uh, we, we sing some funny songs like that he likes. But boy, he likes them old hymns. He likes them old hymns. He likes them old hymns. Listen, your mama can die and cross the river one of these days. And we're all going to cross one day, people. We're all going to cross one day. One day you're going to die. Do you hear me? One day everybody in here is going to die. Ready or not, you're going to die. Everybody in here is going to leave this world. I hope and pray before you leave here today that you can look at your mom, that you can call your mom and say, Mother, I'll be there. I've messed up. Lord, I've tripped myself. I've fell in the mud. Lord, I've made a mess. But I promise you, Mother, I'll be there. Don't you worry. You can go home to heaven in peace. You can leave this world with peace in your heart. Oh, Mother, I'll be there. Mother, I'll be there. Mother, I'll be there. And he told his daughter that and laid back in the chair and died. And he said the only thing that kept him stealing that money was the thought of his mother back there in that little mountain house praying. Mother, I'll be there. I don't know how long your mother's been gone. But if you could talk to her today, I challenge everybody in here. Before I leave this morning, I'm going to quit being selfish. I'm going to quit being so selfish and just living for me, 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 me. I'm going to respect my mother. And I'm going to get things right with God. And I'm going to call my mother and say, I'm going to be in heaven with you. You say, Brother Danny, my mom's not even saved. Maybe the Lord will use you to get her saved. You say, Brother Danny, my mom's all messed up and sent. Maybe God is, will use you to get your mom in church. And that happens. That happens a lot. And maybe you're here this morning and your mom is alive. And you hadn't made things right with God. I'd like to challenge everybody in here. Oh, that's silly. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Hug her neck. Say, Mom, I'll be there. Tell Mother I'll be there. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. Miss Destiny's going to come and play something softly.
Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I want to ask you a question here this morning, young man, young lady, mother, dad. Could you look at your mother today and say, Mom, I'll be there. By the grace of God, I'll be there. She's playing softly this morning. I wonder if you might just want to slide right out of your seat. Come down here. It'd be a good day to get saved, y'all. It'd be a good day to get saved. Kids are here. Grandkids are here. Mama's here. Son's here. Son's come to honor already. I wonder if you just might want to slip out of your seat. Come on, right now. Let's do that right now. Nobody's looking. Nobody's talking. This is an invitation. If you're not ready to go to heaven when you die, why don't you come? Kneel down. Somebody take the Bible and show you exactly what you've got to do to get saved. Come. Come right now. If you want to get saved and say, Mama, I'll be there, you come on right now. Amen. Come on. Let's get a seat and come. Let's get a seat and come. Some of you men pray this young man coming here. Others are coming. Some of these ladies, God's picking your heart today. Amen. Amen. You want to look at your mom and say, Mother, I'll be there. Tell Mother, I'll be there. When you ladies up here, Amen. That's the greatest thing you could possibly tell your mother. Mother, I'll be there. Come on, come on right now. Come on. Just get AC. This this Mother's Day. You can't think of a greater. I don't care what you buy her. You can buy her a new car, you can buy her a new house. And it wouldn't mean more to her than saying, Mother, I'll see you in heaven one day. I'll be there, Mother. I'll be there. You come right now. Come on. Come on. Come on right now. Come on, young fella. Come on, young lady. Amen. Husband, wife, mom. Maybe your mom here this morning said, Preacher, I want to be there. I want to take my kids to heaven. I want to see my grandkids in heaven. I don't want to die and, and never see them again. Oh, God, help me this morning. Come on, right now. Come on, right now. Good time to come. Good time to come. Amen. 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 Over here. Amen. Let God speak your heart this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let God speak your heart this morning. Others are coming. I want to just look at my mother today, Brother Danny, and say, Mother, I'll be there. I'll be there. You'll see me there, Mom. I'll be there by the grace of God, by the help of the Lord. By the help of the Lord, I'll be there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some still praying this morning. Praise God. Come on, sir. You want, you want to go to heaven when you die? The Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to touch Christ in your heart. Ask Him to come into your heart and save you by His mercy and by His grace. Trust the blood of Jesus Christ to take you to heaven when you leave this world. Get that done. Get that done. Get that out of the way. Everything else you accomplish in life is good, but it's secondary. It's all secondary to that. That's your foundation. That's where you start. Get saved. Get right with God. Then live a good life. Then accomplish great things. Get an education. Make money. Build a nice house. All that's great. Get your foundation settled. Get it settled first. Then build upon it. Amen. 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 Others. Others. Others need to come. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all these mothers that are here this morning. I pray you bless every single one of them. Have you in our hearts today. God, do what ought to be done in our lives. We love you. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, the Holy Ghost to come down and bless every one of them today. Bless all these boys in here today. Help every one of them to say, Mother, I'll be there. Oh, God, don't let a person leave here today without being able to look at their mom and say that. All these young ladies, same thing. Do what ought to be done in their lives. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake we ask it. Thank the Lord. Amen. So I'm still praying this morning. Give me just a second. Amen. 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 This young lady just got saved, y'all. She tell her mother she'll be there. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Best news your mother ever hear from you. I'll be there. See, we ain't gonna stay here forever. Might feel like it, but we ain't. Amen. Glory to God. Isn't that a blessing, y'all? Amen. Amen. Thank God. Oh. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm, we're going to let you go early because I know 
the Methodists are done in line, you might as well wait a while. They done, they got through an hour ago. Uh, but uh, I'll try to get you out of here. Worst day in the year to go eat out. I ain't. Uh, uh, but uh, make sure that you make all of our visitors welcome today. All y'all that come here this morning, this young lady got saved. Miss Grace over there besides uh, Miss Susan. Y'all be sure to make this young lady welcome. She's with him today. Uh, Dax is here somewhere. He's out and go to sleep. They traveled all night from Utah to get here. And I appreciate them doing that. Honor mother. Amen. All night long. Y'all rested up? Y'all rested up? We're going to go ride this evening. Amen. Uh, hey, crazy people in Utah, y'all. But anyway, uh, and this lady here with the seven kids and the other lady with the seven kids, God bless you. And bro, I can never watch his name. Ronnie, raise your hand there, Ron. Ronnie's got a body shop. If anybody needs body work done, he's the best in town. Paint, little dents and stuff like that. See that man? Raise your hand right there. I'm just giving you a plug right here, y'all. Uh, he'll help you out. All right. Let's get out of here, y'all. Uh, uh, we're going to be dismissed and be back this evening. Anybody find out the weather? <laughs>